meeting at the Environment Scrutiny Commission. My name is Liam Werner and I'm going to chair this meeting tonight. Um, so a few announcements. This meeting will be recorded by the Council and uploaded to Southwark Council's YouTube channel. To ensure that the virtual meeting runs smoothly, only one individual should speak at a time. If any member of the Commission wishes to speak, could you indicate via the chat function if you can? Bear in mind, this is a, there's a recording of this meeting. Um, a recording of this meeting will be posted on the Council's YouTube channel. If you're planning to speak at the meeting, you can choose to switch off your camera so that your voice, only your voice will be heard. Members of the public, if there are any, are welcome to record, screenshot or tweet the public proceedings of this meeting. And a copy of the Council's protocol for reporting and filming is available at, on our website. Do I have any apologies? No, great. And if I can confirm voting members, so if I just read out your name, Graham Neal, Councillor Graham Neal. Oh, oh, sorry, just before I go any further, I've just had a text from Rada saying I'm stuck in a virtual room with Graham Neal. So uh, oh. I, I think they might be in the old, the old yeah. meeting. Um, room can can we send them the link or can we well, invite yeah. them in do you know how to do that i'll, I'll send the link here to both of those councillors to their email yes i'll do that now okay so that they're, they're waiting they're in a different room that sounds interesting right so i'll uh, carry on through the names so um councillor tom flynn can you introduce yes. yourself? Um, Hi, yeah, Councillor, Councillor Tom Flynn. Yes, I'm a voting member. Voting member and Councillor, uh, Councillor Richard Leeming sent his apologies for tonight. Councillor Damien O'Brien. Yes, present and voting chair. Great. Um, Councillor Michael Situ. Uh, yes, chair, present and voting. Great. And Jeremy Leach. Hi, Jeremy Leach. I'm a co-opted member. Great. Um, so I think we'll just give it a couple of minutes for, for um, Graham and Rada to finish. Yeah, we need to wait for them, them to arrive. So we'll give it a few more minutes. Stuck somewhere else. So has anyone got an electric bike? Oh, they're here. The Amira has just got an electric scooter. Has she? Yeah, I saw that on um, Twitter. She got rid of a car, which is great. Good step in the yeah. I didn't realise she had a car in the city. Did yeah, think? well, she got, it, she got it on lease and then realised, okay. especially because it was just at the start of the uh, 2017 election. I said, oh, you've got a car. Can you pick up some people taking them to the polling station? She said, well, um, only if they're able, because it was like a little BMW sports car that was impossible to get in and out of. So, Right, yeah. well, and fancy, fancy, fancy. Um, you realise. Right, we're going to carry on. So, Councillor Neil and Councillor Burgess, can you just introduce yourself as voting members? Uh, yes. Hello. I, I haven't got my video going because I have terrible internet, but I'm here and ready to be a voting member. Great. Excellent. And Councillor Neil, Vice Chair Neil, I should say. Can't hear you. Got your mute on, mate. I'll be the first person to be. I think you're muted, which is uh, that's a first for this meeting, I guess. <laughs> I'm Councillor Graham Neil. I'm uh, I'm vice chair of this uh, of this committee meeting, and uh, I'm ready to vote when required. Okay, excellent. So, thank you for introducing yourself. So, I don't have any notifications of urgent business. Um, do I have any disclosure of interest or dispensations? No? Okay. Great. Right. So we only have two items on the agenda. It is the air quality report and the climate emergency report. So we need to get those, um, hope we'd like to get them signed off tonight because they need to go to cabinet by four o'clock tomorrow. Um, and then they will go to the next cabinet meeting on the 16th of July. So if we start with the air quality report, I just want to thank everyone for their work on it, because I think it's been very much a team effort and everyone has 
contributed over the kind of the year and towards the end so you've all given recommendations you've helped edit it tweak tweak it so I'm really really grateful I think it has been a team effort so I think that's really positive so I we've sent the final version of the air quality report do you have any amends changes anything you'd like to see if you'd like to speak if you just indicate in the chat that would be great so we'll start off with the air quality report can I just clarify that um, the one that I sent to everybody on email has been published as well um, last night so um, that is the latest one okay so the latest ones I've got um, Councillor Burgess who'd like to raise something please go ahead yeah, yeah. Um, hello everyone um, I received something um, quite interesting today from the SE5 forum that has been um, working and thinking about how we tackle the challenges of main roads and their attendant pollution. Um, and they've got together a couple of pages of um, quite interesting asks uh, for the council. And I thought I might... Um, share it with the group and actually it could be something that we might want to include in the report as an addendum as an example of the kind of thing that we might recommend that the council considers both as part of its air quality strategy and also as part of its um, post-covid response um, just to have something in there that is completely kind of practical that just says this is the kind of thing that local groups are talking about and this is the kind of thing that the council may want to consider. And I'll, I'll share that with the rest of the group. But if you're happy for it to be included, we could put it there as a kind of practical point of um, activities that we could undertake. OK, um, I've got. Sorry, could everyone put thanks, Rada? Could everyone put themselves on mute unless you're speaking? Because I can hear my voice a bit and it's a bit disconcerting. Um, Councillor Neil, you had a point. Yeah, if I could. Chair, is it, is it regarding Rada's point? Is it? No, it's a standalone point. It's standalone. OK, so I just like to. So could we in terms of putting that in the addendum, is that. We would need everyone to agree to that, wouldn't we, on the commission? I mean, I could circulate it and then if people could respond uh, via email to just say thumbs up or down, uh, maybe that would work. Do, Judy, what are your thoughts in terms of time? How how logis how can we do this? Um, I think you could. I think you could send it by email. I think also um, we would need to show it to the meeting as well. So if you were to send it to, via email, um, rather, I could also publish it um, on the screen. Unless unless you know how to do that, um, so we can have we can see it now. So that's just so that everybody in okay. the meeting can see it as well. Yeah, let me send it to you uh, right now, Julie. Thanks a lot. That's it might idea. be helpful just to send it to everybody, but or you could send it to me just so that we can all see it in different ways as well, because sometimes yep. the screen's a bit tricky. Agreed. Perfect. Great. Well, while you do that, um, Graham, is your point a, a big one or do you want no. to? Do you want to go uh, ahead now while we're yeah. waiting for Rod yeah. to send uh, it? I, 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 I don't, don't want to snipe, but I would just like to raise the point that um, some time ago, I asked for a ward by ward breakdown of the parking spaces that were, that were available on street and on estates. And it's a shame, as I said at the last meeting, it's a shame that they weren't ready to put into the report. But I don't know, uh, I don't really know if we can add any value to the report at this stage. Yeah. But I, I did want to make that point. I'm sorry if that comes across as negative. No, but not at all. Do you know why we didn't get them? Did we? I think we got. Yeah, I mean, it was requested. Um, so at the last meeting, Pip came along, didn't she, with some information, and she did say that she would get that further information. Um, I haven't heard from her, but I can chase it up. Um, if we can get it. Oh, sorry, carry on. Yeah, if I could. Thank you, Chair. It's, it's difficult to do this online. Um, I, I understand that there was a problem, I'm told, because of the, the COVID, people being furloughed. We were given the uh, details of the on-street by a parking zone, by CPZ zone, 
but I think that's widely available. I don't think that there's any. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, uh, and as as you know, as as you'll remember, I have been asking for this for some time. I, I'm I'm a bit concerned, given uh, may, maybe it's only councillors that I don't, I don't mean to patronise officers, but if, if that information was to given to councillors, so that councillors were told you have X number of parking spaces in your in on the street and yeah. X number of parking spaces in your estates. I think that that would make it a lot easier for councillors to get with the programme and to understand that it yeah. is just a minority of voters and that the greater good could be served by working to further reduce the amount of parking provision that the, the, that the council offers. Thank okay. you, Chair. OK, no worries. Tom, you, um, Councillor Finlay, you have um, a comment, don't you, on this? Yeah, it was just, um, uh, you know, it's a shame. I totally agree with Councillor Neil on that. It's a shame that this wasn't able to be added. I'd, I would support a point um, in a, a brief amendment to the report that just expressed our disappointment. Okay. Just for the record. Thank you, yeah. Tom. Thank you, Tom. We can, we can do that. So how does it work? If we, could you, could someone write that up quickly? And then we can circulate it so we can agree it. Is that how it works? I, I think, Chair, I mean, sorry, Councillor Neil, did you want to say something? Sorry. I, I mean, I, I could, in one sentence, I could say uh, councillors expressed disappointment that um, the, the requested data of parking spaces on street and on estates was not available in time for this report. OK. By uh, Ward. Sorry, by, uh, by Ward. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Teamwork so there teamwork if you're if you're able to um just i can i can either sort of try and record that or go back to the recording or if you if you want to just write that in an email i can just cut and paste it into the report um okay could i put it in the chat perhaps i could chat it yeah that. Well, that would be very good i can paste it from the chat yeah and does everyone agree to that yeah agreed everyone happy with that um i think it's a really good amendment agreed Great to make. So thank you. Thanks for raising that. Great. So we'll add that to the document. So Rada, she sent the document to Julie, and I think she sent it to all of us via our email, council email. So if could we yes, put that's that right. on the screen so people can see it? Is it a big report, Rada? No, oh, it's, not, it's, that it's is only two the, pages. The, the beauty yeah. of it is just a two pager and it just is a completely practical response to some of the challenges that we've been discussing. OK. So right. maybe we can get it on the screen and then we can take a few minutes, say five minutes to just read through it and then see if we're happy with it. If we have any questions, is that OK? Yeah, I'm just I'm just working on getting it up on the screen chair. Can, can everybody see it? Have you got it by email? I've got it on my email. Is OK, if everybody's able to read it, I will work on getting it on the screen. I don't have this on screen. Now. Do you have it on your email? I'm just working uh, on getting it on the screen. OK, let's have a look at that then. Thank you. Yes, of course. Yeah, thank you. Great. Yeah, that's fine, Gray. Uh, my sentence on chat? Yeah. OK, thank you, Damien. Uh, other others that the, uh, the, the there's the one sentence addendum that I put on chat. If you want to have a quick look at that, I just don't want it to lose. I mean, um, Leanne, when you're promoted to the cabinet in in a few weeks, 
<laughs> I don't. I don't want whoever takes over your your role to uh, lose that, lose sight of that request. Uh, <clears throat> I'm having some problems uploading it. Um. OK, uh, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, so, uh, Chair, Chair, is the idea then, again, just to add this as, a, as, as an appendix to the uh, to our report? So, um, yeah. uh, that was my proposal, Graham, yeah. That's Rada okay. speaking, not the chair. Okay. <laughs> Julie, it's about to land in your inbox, okay? Yeah, I've got it in my inbox. Um, it's a problem just getting it. I'm just trying to find a way to upload it. All right, okay. Oh, it's good. It's Teams thing's working quite well. I don't like Teams as much as Zoom. It's um, No. I can't find the buttons. It's not as intuitive, I guess, or maybe it's just me. I, I can't see the other uh, attendees. I can just see a handful of us. I mean, yeah, you can't see the four of us. Yeah, I mean, oh. it's, a, it's it's a it's a, it's a lovely picture, but uh, it's not. Mm. God, I was in a Zoom meeting with fifty people in the other night. Really? That was interesting. Did they all have thumbnails? uh no and oh and then i was at the um southwark together thing where you could i could scroll through three different screens oh, where right. everybody okay. had thumbnails but there was about 30 of us 30 or 40 of us sorry I, I i just wanted to say so let me just read out um so councillor neil councillors expressed disappointment that the requested data showing parking spaces on street and on on estates by ward was not available in time to include in this report and jeremy has um jeremy leach has some thoughts on this my thought for graham was whether car ownership by ward percentage of households with no car is an acceptable acceptable proxy for the parking data to give a sense of the difference between wards across southwark do you want to explain a bit more jeremy uh, yeah, I'll, thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll only take a second. So there's really granular data, certainly at, uh, um, from the census, 2011 census, which and the numbers don't change that much, much by ward. There's also, uh, so that is the percentage of households with no cars, and that you know, that, I mean, I've I've got a spreadsheet of that, and I can include now. Um, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not in any way disagreeing with Graham. It would be great to have that data, but the, there is that proxy available. The other thing that's available is. 2019 data 2018 2019 data for the numbers of um uh the numbers of cars per household at a postcode level so it's just it's just there is contemporary data there to make the point that graham's trying to raise okay and you can send us that so i think it's worth including that in the report um but we'd need to explain it um, yeah I, 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 I don't know if I entirely understand it, but I know on my own estate, you, it, it depends on the demographic of the household. So if you start off with mum and dad and young children, they might have one car or no car. But as those kids get older and they start uh, their late teenage years and start working, sometimes you in and before they fly the coop, you can sometimes have three or four cars per household and they'll complain about having to pay for the permits. And then eventually, of course, they will fly the coop. And then you've got uh, mum and dad going into retirement. And again, you're back to that sort of, yeah. even not sure if what I'm saying is particularly relevant, but it's just the numbers change as life moves on. And I think what we're trying to achieve here is polluter pays. So if you have a car and if you're in, and you want to park it on the estate, yeah. then that needs to be something that's going to hit you in the pocket. And that's something that you might want to consider an alternative to having the car in the first place. Is that's that's what we're trying to achieve as a as 
as a commission, aren't we? Is is we're trying to? If yeah, I I think we do need the data from the council because you know yeah someone could have more than one car. It is good. Yeah, we we need we need both evidence. I think. Um, yeah, sorry. I, I, I would agree. Really I would agree with that, Leanne. <laughs> is that is that okay? So I think would everyone agree to um, Councillor Neil's amendment change? Yeah, uh, appendix. Append in the appendix, yeah. Uh, so, do I propose that? Do I need to? Yeah, it? if you propose that. Can I have yeah, a second? second Thank you, Damien. Do, does anyone? Does everyone agree to that? Agreed. 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 Okay. Great. Agreed. I think that's fine. Great. So, if we move on to the document that Rada sent, have you all read it? Sorry, yes. we're multitasking at the moment. We have we discussing two things Good. yeah um is this the air quality report stuff or the the air quality so it's yeah. related to the air quality so it's okay i've sent through a couple of little typo things to julia i'm sure she'll be able to um fix my only comment was um so, I this is, so we're, we're talking about the document that rod has just sent from Campbell. yeah, yeah. That... is that right yeah 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 we're not yes. not the whole report. We're talking about something that Rada would like us to include in the report. Some last a last oh. minute evidence. Oh, sorry. Where is that? And um, she just sent it to everyone via email. And I think Judy, can you get it up? I'm um, unfortunately I'm not able to. I've tried and um, I can't access my drive for some reason. Um, it's possible that Fitz may be able to do that. Um, I've that. emailed it to you, Fitz, but I think we might just at the moment just have to rely on members reading it by email and um, and then I'll just publish it for the public later on. OK, but so, has anybody got sight of it by email? Yes, I have. Graham has. Yeah, yeah, I, has. Hi, Elvis. Um, it, it's only two pages long, guys. Yeah, I, I, I'm happy with it and I'd, I'd like to propose that we uh, 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 well, if, if, if perhaps Rada would, but if she wants to propose it, I'm happy to second it for including in the document. Uh, thank you, Graham. Yes, I, I will propose that we include this as a kind of addendum or in the appendix. Yes. I'll second that. As, Agreed. As, 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 as it exists on paper. It's not really, it's not our document, so it's not for us to uh, amend it in any way. No. no. So, um, I've just... Choice says he hasn't read, seen the document. That's okay. As long as, okay. as, as long as as long as everybody, as long as the commission, I'm, I'm happy with it. So if we yeah. take a vote, if, if you've all seen it and you're happy for it to, to be put in the report, is, is any any other comments? No, great. So you're happy with that. Just, just that it's as a Camberwell councillor, that it's a really really good document and totally okay. support uh, it being given as an example. Okay, great. Good. So I think everyone is in support of it, so we will include it. Thank you very much, Rada, for bringing that to the meeting. Pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank you. Um, Damien, I believe you had a comment regard another comment regarding the air quality report in general. Yeah. So there were just a couple of typos. I've sent those through to Julia. Just this is the word "not impossible" when it's actually what we're trying to say. It's impossible. Um, <laughs> but, but I've sent those through. But the um, just on the recommendations. Um, yeah, I just wonder, just a thought put out there is we haven't prioritized those recommendations. And I'm wondering, again, Damien's sort of philosophy of grabbing the low hanging fruit, because obviously we went to Wartham Forest where they've got their mini Hollands. But I'm conscious of the fact they also got almost 30 million pounds worth of TFL before TFL's finances went, um, went south. Yeah. And this, this stuff does cost money. And OK, at the moment, we've got the emergency interventions with the little pots that TfL have given us over the COVID-19 situation. But getting beyond that, I'm just wondering whether we should be looking at the is it 12 or 13 recommendations, all of which I think are brilliant, and then setting, setting priorities, getting the biggest bang for our buck, which is the most deliverable of those. Because some of them, like extending the ULES uh, to all of Southwark, it's very aspirational, but yeah. it's very deliverable. 
um, because okay. of the cost of the cameras and the rest of it. So that to me would be one of the lowest priorities ones to chase. And I don't know that it needs to be sorted out in the immediate future or if it affects the document going forward to cabinet in any way, shape or form, but it might be a piece of work that we need to um, to decide because we can't eat the whole elephant at once. We've got to, we've yeah. Got, yeah. I've, I think that's a really, really good point. And I, I, I think I don't, I don't know whether we should change this document now, but no, I think when no, I when no. when I go to cabinet on the 16th, I, don't, I have very limited time to present it, so it might be worth thinking about what we want to really focus on during the meeting. Yeah, no, I don't think the document yeah. should be changed. It should have yeah. gone as it is. Yeah, no, absolutely. About priorities, yeah, you're right in terms of what. Yeah, I I agree with that. I have a suggestion as well. Um, someone, um, I'm going to put it in the chat, so it'd be good. Um, let me just copy and paste it. So it's regarding um, cycle storage. Let me put it into the chat. Copy it. So, so on our air quality, we're thinking, do you think we need to strengthen the bike storage rollout in the report? So do you think we need to be um, maybe word it more strongly? So if I read this out on, so secure bike store, store rollout in tens of thousands, directly replacing car storage spaces and just saying that improves health, improves the air quality, reduces traffic, drives modal shift. So we're, we're asking for a massive investment in um, bike storage. Do you think we? Y yes. So it's strength. It's strengthening that recommendation. Would you be yeah. happy with that kind of wording? Yeah, I think so. Leanne, I would agree with that. And I think that the, the other element to that is not only the bike storage, but actually um, cycle hire provision, whether it is normal bicycles, as it were, or electric bicycles, because without that kind of provision of, of alternative transport, we're not going to get the modal shift that we want. OK, so I, I, I think we've had this. Yeah, I agree. I think we've had this discussion before about how it, how important it is. So to replace parking spaces with bike storage, I think it's it's a no brainer, really. Yes, yes. And the other thing, Leanne, is that we have an ambitious target. Um, sorry, I haven't actually got the document with me, but we've got a really ambitious target of reducing car parking spaces by, I think, 10 percent. Um, and there's a certain time frame for that. But I think that we should go a bit further or I would propose that we go a bit further than that and say year on year there is a further production um, reduction until we reach our goal of you know, 50 percent okay. reduction in 10 years or whatever. Uh, you know, I think well, we need to. I, I, I think that's good. Do you other people's thoughts? Are you happy for us to include that? Yeah. yeah. Great. Could you yeah. could you write that rather and send it to me? What you just said? <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. I will. I will. Great. Yeah. OK. Anything else before we move on to the next record? Can I, can I just clarify, so did you um, agree the air quality one, the text that you put in there, uh, was that all agreed? Yes. Yeah. yeah. OK. And then was the other one about, the other one is the one that Rad is writing. Yeah. And then, OK. Yeah. And she, if you put that in the message and then we can just um, sign it off. So oh. are, are there any other comments about the air quality report or should we move on to the next report? You probably just need to um, just uh, need to indicate that everybody's in agreement with that. Report. Oh, yeah. So is everyone in agreement? Um, are you happy to sign off the air quality report? Agreed. With these amendments? Yes. Agreed. 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 Great. And thank you, Chair and uh, uh, officers for, for getting that all sorted. It's a massive piece of work. Thank it's you. a it's a it's a big report. <laughs> yeah. And it's then a thousand words, isn't it? It's it's a it's I don't know it's long and then the the next one is the climate emergency report which is shorter and it's a more of an overview. Um, we have actually um, Councillor Pollack sent a couple of amendments 
um, to that report, which I'd like to show you. Can we show them, Judy, or not? We can't, no. Um, you're on mute. So yes, yeah, some technical challenges there. Um, so I think what would be good is if, if everybody wouldn't mind checking their emails. Um, and I think we're just okay. going to do it that way. So I have sent them through in advance for this item. So there's two documents on there, um, which hopefully you can see. So one of them is called, um, <clears throat> one of them is... Cabinet Member Social Regeneration Amendments. Yes, and the exactly. Executive summary. Yeah, so I think uh, the chair's indicating to take the cabinet members of amendments there now. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's this? So this is the cabinet member for social regeneration amendments. Because we, we took it from his report, but he there were a couple of amendments he made. Um, I think Leo needs a pat on the back for taking the initiative on that. That's really good. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I, I think he's it's tremendous. I agree. I, yeah. Yeah. I wonder why we don't see much from the director. I mean, the last meeting he suddenly popped out out of nowhere. But in terms of coordinating the different elements of the council into, you know, so Leo's, you know, are you talking about Chris Page? The I, director of I was allowed to say his name, but yeah, I, I just wonder. I expected more about that, that office, quite frankly, that post. 
um, to say, look, this is where I'm trying to bring, you know, the big main players, the big carbon producing areas within the council. Let's start with them first and bring them together and start working out how we can work together. I know that just about every element of council operations will have either a, an impact on emissions to a large or small extent. Um, I think the lady last time said there was like 50 elements of the council that have an impact. And I just don't understand why that office has been so quiet. I mean, I've, I've not seen anything come through my inbox. I've had no updates. Um, like I say, Chris suddenly popped up at the end of the meeting when I, when I name checked him, not realizing he was actually even in the meeting. I'm just not sure that it's working, to be honest, is my fear, having made the investment of having someone, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we, we will see more when the strategy is released, but I mean, he has been to quite a few of our meetings and he is coordinating across the council. And I think we'll have more of an idea when the strategy is actually, um, okay. yeah, if we get the strategy in July. Um, so when it's published, I think we'll have a better idea then. Okay. And it, I, I don't think he's in, been in post that long. And then he was redeployed to the COVID response so yeah i think once we get the strategy in july um, I, have a better idea leanne if, if i can just say i think that um you know it's been a difficult time but it would be very helpful if this committee could um somehow formalize um a closer working relationship with someone in such a strategic post and i think we might like to think about um how how we make that happen because you know i think some things have kind of fallen through the cracks so if if we could work out how we um strengthen that relationship mm -hmm. that would be better because you know um, i'd like to echo what graham said earlier i think this committee has done some great work and the air quality report has some great content in it um and one of our criticisms has been that we've got lots of great policy, but we're unconvinced that it's being implemented. And so in terms of a weak link, that's something that we would really, really like to strengthen. And mm -hmm. I'd be interested in the committee's thoughts of how we do that. OK, C can we go back to that? Can we can we go back to the so I, I showed you Councillor Pollock's document. Are you happy for that, that those amendments in the document? And then we can come back to your point. So we just yep. stay on track. Is that okay? Any yep. any questions, yeah. objections? Happy for that to, to go through. And I think Julie also sent um, the executive summary as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that. Yeah. Great. I, so I think all the amends, changes, does anyone else have any comments regarding the climate strategy document? Yeah, it's Jeremy here. I'd like to. Hi, make Jeremy. Point. Um, so, um, I, I suppose I, I'm afraid I'm not across the climate strategy document as much as the air quality one. My concern remains about the new Southwark plan and the policies in that, and how how open to amendment that is. We don't mention the new Southwark plan in the executive summary, and I suppose there's a there's just such a big. There's just such a big question about the the influence that has on the future as it gets signed off and i'm just i've got a sense that in the conversations we've had we've been very acutely aware of the impact that could have but i'm i'm not sure the weight we give that in terms of we really need maybe it goes through the um the inspector's process but we need then to have a, a robust capacity for it to amend it in relation to embodied carbon and all those other issues it's just it's just how the report and what the committee wants to do is going to capture that i think it is in the report can we get that section we can't um i'm just trying to think shall i do you want me to copy and paste that section into the into the chat box um do you have it julie to hand I can't hear you, sorry. So, yes, yeah, sorry, I've just written a little note about the new Southwark plan and my understanding, um, which is I think that they are developing subsidiary plans around um, energy and a few other areas, which I think can be, which are still in development and are open to influence. Um, but sorry, Leanne, you wanted, you wanted me to actually send something. What, what well, did you want me to uh, send? Well, it's what we've written in the report about the new Southwark plan. 
Um, I don't I don't think there was anything directly in the report. I other than that was that there was a reference to the the on site target. So okay. the, the, there was that those were the two references to it. So there was um, a recommendation that um, we deliver on the on site target of 100 percent of carbon in major domestic yeah. developments and 40 percent in um, <clears throat> Non yes, yeah, non, they're non-domestic. Um, and there was a and there was a recommendation that we um, increase how much is delivered on site. So the new Southwark plan gives us 100% and 40%, yeah. but some of that is not actually being delivered in 100% and 40%. It's been um, yeah. offset through carbon offset. So there's a recommendation on that, which I can pick out and cut and paste, but that is the only recommendation that relates to the new Southwark plan. Um, but but I, but like I said, you might want to think about the subsidiary plans and making a recommendation around those because I do know that there was, there is a subsidiary plan, um, and I'm a bit, out, I'm, I have to be a little bit cautious about what I'm saying because it's highly technical, and I'm still, I'm a layperson, so um, I do think that there was an energy policy that's been recently published. I don't know if it's finalised or in draft, but I think that does touch upon some of the areas that you've been considering and when we first talked to uh, the planning officers they did indicate that those were the areas that could be influenced but I think you'd probably have to get them in and interrogate them a little bit more to find out exactly what can and can't be um, can be influenced. Yeah. I mean that that sits about right right with me I think the um, NSP is about to go to its examination uh, in public, which means it's really at, at, at its final stages after five years of consultation. But an SPD, a supplementary planning document, specifically looking at carbon emissions is something that we can have a lot more input on. And it seems, it just strikes me as the right vehicle for us to be involved with that SPD rather than um, sort of like the granddaddy, which is the NSP. And 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 for me and for me, Damien, that's completely fine. I just think we should make reference to that as a means for scrutiny of the new South plan through the vehicle of the SPD. So, can we bring that to the next meeting? Well, if you want to, you could you could invite officers back to the next meeting. However, if you did want to make a reflection on the SPDs, you would have to think of some, and you wanted that to go in this report. You would have to do that now. Um, if somebody could come up with a form of wording that you were confident with. So and could I have a crack? Could I have yeah. a crack at that and then see if that's yeah. acceptable? Yeah. Yeah. So anything else about the overall climate report? I think it's pretty, pretty well there, actually. I'd, it's good. OK, so if Jeremy's working on that, I guess we need, once we've looked at that and if we're happy to sign it off, we can get this report signed off. And I think we could go back to Rada's point about going forward, how we can better engage with officers. I think that's a really good point. And, and moving forward, what do we do? So do you want to come back in, Rada? Sorry, I was on mute. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we might want to consider, um, you know, formalising the relationship, as it were, with the um, with the director for climate change, at least in the sense that, you know, he is always at our environmental scrutiny meetings. Um, perhaps we have a briefing. Yeah. at a reasonable period so that we understand exactly what is happening mm -hmm. across the council departments um, reg with regards to climate mm -hmm. change. Um, you know, another um, permanent um, concern that this committee has expressed is that different bits of the council are working in silos, that there isn't enough sort of cross-contamination, mm -hmm. as it were, of work. And presumably um, the director for climate change is very much aware of that and trying to pull all these different strands together. So I think, you know, we we need to have a briefing from him. Yeah. As, you know, in terms of, um, 
you know what he's doing to affect that kind of change and i you know i'd really welcome any yeah. other ideas really, really from this committee point. as to how we can get that kind of thing done no it's an excellent point and i think to have that briefing so if if this environment commission kind of continues if it does then i think i think that would work well so before each meeting we have a brief from from the director on on you know what what has happened overall because it's a ma it touches everything that the council does it's massive it's really complex so we just need that kind of overview and i think i think that's a really good point actually yeah i think you should have a permanent slot on the agenda for our scrutiny meetings okay and then, and then he'll know to with as Chris, well. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah, I'd love to hear from him every time just to be kept up to date. Yeah, I think I think it's a good suggestion. Do we have any other suggestions? So in terms of going forward, that's what we're talking about now. How can things be improved? What should we be looking at? Any any thoughts? Yeah, a, a, a written briefing before the meeting would make it easier for us to. Uh, sure. Uh, from make from the director. Well, yeah. yeah. Prepare questions after based on that. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. I know it's more work, okay. but it makes for much better meetings. Wouldn't, wouldn't no, it and, it, and, he, and he should have that to hand. I think it's a, a brilliant suggestion. Yes. Because it is, there's all these different bitty pieces, different departments, and it's having that kind of strategic overview, which would be really helpful. Yeah, I mean, we're not there to catch the guy out. We're all no, pulling in the same direction. So, yeah, we the better. Us put things into, yeah. you know, context. The, the other thing that I would suggest um particularly in the light of the recent um you know black lives matter um issues i think we should be it's it's we should be very conscious um about um really trying to widen the pool of witnesses that we that come to this committee yeah. um you know it's it's challenging for everyone but i have to say that you know it has been extremely white um, and I think that we need uh, as much as we can to really seek out a, di a proper diversity of voices. Um, you know, it's no secret that a lot of environmental activism is not very diverse. And I think that, you know, yeah. we should try and uh, change that as much as we can and, and get as many different voices as we possibly can as witnesses, as members of the committee etc etc yeah couldn't couldn't agree more i think that's that's a good very good point pertinent point um jet can we just go sorry switching because we're trying to do all these things so jeremy you've just posted something in the chat do you want to read it out yes sorry if it's not very good um the commission is aware of the significance of the new southwark plan in relation to the delivery of southwark's overall climate goals and in the absence of changes to the plan at this stage, is keen to ensure that so that delivers on its low carbon growth through supplementary planning documents and that these should be developed as a matter of urgency. Um, I'm just, I, it sounds good, but I'm just reading it again. Yeah, let me read it as well, yeah. That's great. Do you think we should put a time frame in? Can we? I don't feel too comfortable about the in the absence of changes to the plan. I just, um, uh, I don't know if it's necessary to say that. Um, the plan has formulated over quite a number of years and it, you know, what, what's happened in the past doesn't change, doesn't stop us from achieving what we're looking to do moving forward. Uh, just jars with me a little bit that those few words that's all do we need to add anything about biodiversity into that as well it's possible that um is there a, is there a subsidiary planning document on biodiversity no i don't believe so not at the moment there should be there was a consultation on a biodiversity strategy just before christmas if i remember 
Yeah, I'd, I'd have to look it up. I mean, there's about eight or ten SPDs, but I can't, it doesn't jump out at me that I remember there being a biodiversity one. I don't want to, I could be staying, I could stand corrected though. Can we can we say Southwark delivers on its low carbon growth and imp increases biodiversity through planning? And commitments to increase biodiversity. Yeah. yeah. I like all of that, but I always kind of slightly get worried about there not being specifics. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I know it's hard to to nail down yeah. specifics here, but I think that unless people are actually asked to do something quite concrete, um, you know, what is increasing the biodiversity? Is it an extra bush? You know, well, you know we do I explain think... what that is in the report. So we do explain that it, it, we need to declare an ecological emergency and what we need to do to improve biodiversity in the borough, and that okay. we have a crisis point. So it's, it is explained. So I think it would would fit in. But in terms of making it specific, so supplementary planning documents, could we be more specific there? In terms of come on, Grace. I think it's a good recommendation and it's it's saying that you know they need to produce these planning documents and it's holding holding them to account I don't think there's anything wrong with putting it in the report okay there's I've got the list of them here there's the affordable housing SPD development viability design and access statements residential design standards section 106 and SIL and then there's a sustainability assessments SPD, sustainable design and construction SPD, and advertisements and telecoms SPD. So there's nine SPDs at the moment. The energy one in there as well. No, not not unless it's in and uh, being wrapped up in something else. It might be in the sustainable. Just no, that's that's the embodied. Carbon one, that one. There was something about energy um, that had been published recently. Okay, it might not have finished its um, trip through the process yet then. So do you want us to add those, all the different documents and list no. them specifically, do you think? No, I don't think so. Or do you think supplementary planning documents is enough? Yeah, I think so. And then maybe we could put a footer to what are these supplementary documents, the ones you just listed? Yeah, well, these are the existing ones. So the, the, these are there. They, they they exist already, so we don't need to worry too much. But um, what I think what Jeremy's looking for is our ability to shape the uh, actions that planning can undertake that improve uh, or, or um, contribute to the goals of our climate emergency yeah. through yeah I, th I think that's right and and I, I you know for me the mo two most important one would be you know low stroke zero carbon growth and also you know biodiversity i think you know i think the spd can work out exactly what it is because i agree with rather you don't want it to be vague but mentioning you know zero carbon construction along with biodiversity is not unreasonable as two objects for an spd I agree, Jeremy. A agreed. So what we really want is a climate emergency SPD, don't we? And then we can really go to town with the detail inside that. No? Um, I mean, you I, could, you, yeah. you could, I mean, with a little bit of tweaking, what you could do is um, sort of pull out, I think you sort of said that the new subject plan needs to indicate that, that it's, you know, it's a sort of done deal. Um, you could sort of leave it at this higher level and pick out the climate, uh, the, the carbon and the biodiversity. And then once you meet back again or the new administrative comes back, you might be able to inter interrogate the, the officers a bit more to make more of a detailed sort of recommendation then. 
So, so shall I? Shall I just take the biodiversity one and Damien's point about not having the absence of changes to the plan? Shall I just tweak that a tiny bit and put another suggestion in? Okay. If you can, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I don't think we're. Um, I don't think we're we're painting ourselves into any corners here. We're just sort of flagging stuff, and we can we can deal with the detail as we move forward. So I don't think we're hamstringing ourselves in any way. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy, for doing that. So going back to moving forward. So you suggested <laughs> we have a brief um, from the director for climate emergency. Um, any anything else? Do you think we should be? No. In terms of areas to look at, I'm not sure we, we will have a time for another meeting in um, September. It depends on staff capacity. But in terms of like the bigger issues, what do you think we sh the the Environment Commission, if it it continues, should should be looking at going forward? Um, did someone mention that Chris Page is putting out a scoping document in? July? Rather, was that it's you? That, st the strategy he's putting strategy. out in July. Yeah. Can we get our greedy mitts on that and analyse that over the summer? Yeah. We, we, That's he, a good he idea. Be ready, yeah. yeah, we can ask him. It, it should be taken to Cabinet in July, so it will be a public document. Right. And this is why we want this to go to Cabinet on the 16th of July to influence that. Yeah um anything else I, mean, I, I i think leanne there was something that i don't know i'm ashamed to admit i don't know if it made it into the final report but there was a sentence or two in the draft air quality report that yeah. talked about um air quality in relation to the local economy and it kind of tried to touch on this idea that we should we should probably, particularly in the light of COVID, be thinking of London as a series of kind of livable villages yeah. and the idea of a hyper local economy, um, and because of all the benefits that that has for air quality um, yeah. and you know urban sort of renewal and um, you know local prosperity, and I think that is something that we might want to expand on we've talked about the 15 minute city we were talking yeah. about you know perhaps the five minute city but all of those ideas <laughs> one minute really, city. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but all of those ideas that really kind of again try to get out of the silos yeah. and into a more expansive um strategy absolutely for hyper local living absolutely then, you know maybe that's something we want to look at yeah, and how that will work in practice, especially with the green recovery, this should all be part of it. Um, Jeremy, Councillor Neil, you had your hand up, but can we go back to Jeremy's point so we can get it signed off and just... Yes, I, guess I popped it in the chat. So the, the first bit is unchanged. The second bit goes, the Commission is keen to ensure that Southwark delivers on its ambitions for both zero or low carbon growth and improvements to biodiversity through supplementing pl supplementary planning documents and that these should be developed as a matter of urgency. I'm happy with that. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. happy with that. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone's Great. happy with that signed off. Great. Great. So are you happy to sign off the environment emergency report? Is yeah. everyone agreed? Yeah. Great. Yes. Great. Brilliant. Great. Well done. Excellent. <laughs> So um, that's and a good just, point, Councillor Burgess, and I think Councillor Neil had a point on that. No, my point was made by oh. Councillor Burgess. Oh, is it separate? OK. Uh, Councillor Burgess? No, I'm just, um, I, you caught me audibly smiling. That was all. Oh. <laughs> that's oh, called laugh. We can't see, we can't see you. <laughs> I hope you're having a nice glass of wine. Um, uh, I am actually. I'm with my very, mom. Very, very interested in the whole thing. I'm very jealous. So I'll over to you, <laughs> Councillor Deputy Deputy Chair. Do you have a point? No, no, no. Councillor Burgess made the point uh, very uh, admirably. Uh, yes, I look forward to when we can go from the 15-minute city to the 15-minute meeting. 
Amen. Never happen. Never. I think I think that's it then. So um well sorry, Chair. There was something else that you didn't quite agree. Um I oh. think I think you did probably in principle, but I think formally, I don't think you there was an amendment earlier that Rada put forward um, about the air quality report, and I don't think you formally agreed that one. Um, oh, so about the parking spaces? Um, yeah, I'd have to go up in the chat. Yeah, um, I'm just looking for that now. So, yeah, let's just go through. In, I suppose the idea is that we, we've got this ambitious goal at the beginning, which is a 10% reduction, and then I'm proposing that we have a year on year reduction until we achieve our goal of 50% reduction <laughs> over, it might be 10 years, might be seven years, the committee can decide. But I think, you know, ambitious goals is. I think it's good to have ambitious goals and we need ambitious goals. So I would completely agree with that. Does everyone agree with that 50% target? Yes. yes, good, great, thank you. Okay, I think that I think that's it then. Um, if unless anyone has any other points, no. I just wanted to especially thank Jeremy as a cooperative member <laughs> for coming and advising us in all the yeah. work you've done. You've done a tremendous job. So, like everyone else, but thank you particularly because you know you've done it. You're not you're not a councillor. You're an elected. Yeah. Thank so, you. It's thank been really you. great working with you all. Thanks for involving me. Thanks, no, Jeremy. Really, thank really you. Thank you, Jeremy. everyone. For your help. And well done, it's Chair. Really thank you. And, 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 and thank you very much, Chair. Judy, and yeah, everyone who's contributed. And Julie, yes. Um, so, yeah, it's in terms of, we'll find out whether we'll have a meeting in September in the next few weeks, I guess. It depends whether you have capacity. Is that right? Uh, yeah, it does. And, um, the sort of spacing of other meetings but um yeah if there's capacity then um i hope we can do thank Great. you julie you've been thank brilliant you. Thanks, thank julie. you so much thanks, julie. and um, yeah, we'll send the final thanks everyone tomorrow by four o'clock thanks leanne thanks, well, well done well done leanne take care everyone bye-bye take care bye-bye thank you thank you